Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but one of the other things kind of sources related that struck me is um, maybe a little bit of a frustration on your part in, in a couple of places throughout the book where it's sort of like you had this the story of an individual and it's sort of you had to leave it off because or leave it open because you couldn't find the conclusion to their story or the end. Yeah. Um, how, how much was that as, as sort of wanting to tell the stories of the enslaved frustrating to have these situations that uh, you have a beautiful story and you kind of, mm -hmm. even if it's not a happy end, you would at least like to know the end of yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it is, it is, it's extremely frustrating. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's a couple stories I'm thinking of in particular. So, you know, there's, we, we talked about sort of this, this uncertain nature of, of life, how everything is in a, in a constant state of flux. And one of the stories um, that I was able to uncover involved an enslaved man named Manuel from, from Winchester, who was enslaved by the McDonald family. So individuals who have researched the Valley, you know, are, are pretty darn familiar with Cornelia McDonald, one of the so-called devil diarists of, of Winchester, very ardent Confederate sympathizer, her husband, uh, served in in the Confederate cavalry, and Manuel was was one of these individuals who fled uh, in March of 1862 when Banks occupied the Lower Shenandoah Valley. He worked for Banks as a teamster, and he was caught up in the Union withdrawal from Winchester on May 25th, 1862. And he got to this point north of Winchester, and he stopped his wagon. He abandoned it, and then he started making his way back toward Winchester, hit out in a cottage on Piccadilly Street. And long story short, Cornelia McDonald found out about this and she went and met with him and was able to convince him to come back to their home. And, you know, I mean, you know, as well as I do, one of the, the things that advocates of the lost cause will say is that, you know, slaves loved uh, being a slave and here's evidence. And if you would end the story there, well, yeah, but that's not where the story ends. And, and this is one of those stories that, that comes out of McDonald's diary. So she's not holding back um, with this particular instance. And she said, you know, initially that, that Manuel was, was very um, repentant and said he would never leave again. But lo and behold, he did leave in September of 1862 when General Julius White evacuated the city. And, you know, the reason he came back was because he was thinking about his wife, Catherine, thinking about the children um, and what would happen to them. And so, you know, we know that, that he left, but then there's, there's no way to trace, you know, I don't know if Manuel and Catherine ever made it uh, to a point North. Did, did, were they able to achieve uh, what they had longed to achieve? And, and you see these, these types of, of loose ends all the time. But I mean, that's, that's really one of the kind of the great tragedies of writing about, enslaved people is there it is not easy to track um all the time and they just fall off fall off the map in essence so yeah that that certainly is is a frustrating thing and also i think you know one of the other frustrating things for me uh is i talk about in the book slave hiring practices uh -huh. and, and again you know by the time the civil war breaks out you have about 21% of the, the valley's total population are enslaved. And, but I know that there are many more enslaved people living and working in the valley than what census records reflect. Right. And when you look at, you know, slave rental practices, I mean, these are, these are transactions that, are, that take place on, you know, the 1860s equivalent of a post-it note. There are scraps of paper. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's hard to, I think really gain a sense of just how truly large the enslaved population was in the valley. I mean, we have those those baseline numbers from the census records, but I mean, evidence indicates that individuals are bringing in enslaved people from outside of the valley at various points in the year to perform various labor tasks. 